Yeshua said maturity is when you don't let your feelings tell you that guy or that woman is a jerk who hurts you, but you ignore it, you build yourself up, you guard the love that is within you lest it leak out, and, and you believe Yeshua's cleansing report about others, even those who offend you. Now you're mature in Yeshua. Now you're going to go places in the kingdom of Yahweh. Could you imagine if I went into a pity party every time someone opened a new anti-Moshe Konachowski website? Could you imagine if I went into a state of perpetual depression and suicide? Go on the internet, type in my name. There's like a hundred sites that are dedicated to destroying me and my character and my reputation. Could you imagine where I'd be if I was like some people who just, because somebody criticized what they were wearing or criticized the way they behaved, they, 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 they just disappear from the music scene? How about Bob Dylan when he started playing? They booed him off stage. They hissed at him. They threw apples and tomatoes. He said, you're a poor rendition of Arlo Guthrie. You're a poor, who are you trying to be? You're a loser. Get off the stage, man. Plus you're Jewish, that's even worse. Robert Zimmerman, before it was Bob Dylan, Bob Zimmerman. Could you imagine if he would have quit? Oh, my feelings are hurt. I'll never play Wembley Stadium again. I'll never play the Prince Albert Music Hall. I'll never go to Radio City again. Because they booed me off stage. How about if you were a presidential candidate and you give the wrong answer? Do you see the way they boo these guys on stage? When these guys come on the debate, you ever hear them that give the wrong answer? Boo! If that was some of us, we'd start heading for the hills. We'd start looking for a can of beans and a hole to crawl in. Because we're so easily offended and our feelings will destroy your work and the masterpiece that Yahweh is making you to be in Yeshua. Your feelings, if you don't get a hold of your feelings, will destroy the masterpiece that Yahweh is creating in you in Messiah Yeshua. You've got to rule over your feelings. That is the prerequisite, that's one of the reasons the Ruach HaKodesh was given to you. To give you the power to rule over your feelings. I don't feel like coming today. I don't feel like staying married. I feel like walking out on my kids. Nobody appreciates me. Praise Yahweh, we don't obey our feelings, but sometimes we do. Ah, sometimes we do. And the Ruach HaKodesh is given to you to take authority. I believe it's somewhere <laughs> in 2 Corinthians 10. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through Yahweh to the pulling down of strongholds. To bring every thought into captivity, into the obedience of Mashiach. 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5. You've got Yeshua not to build your own kingdom, but to build, to take every thought captive and bring it into slavery and subjection to the mind of the kingdom. They hurt me, but they're still holy and blameless. They wounded me, but they're still cleansed. They're still worthy of love. I'm not going to punish them. Vengeance is mine, Hebrews 10, 31. I will repay, says Yahweh. Did they hurt you? Guess what? If Yahweh wants to pay them back, they're going to come, boys and girls. You know, when, you know when people are going to stop offending you? You know when you're not going to be offended anymore? When you're dead. <laughs> so you've got to have a different strategy and not get caught off guard when people offend you. And do what Britt does. He ignores it. He doesn't work the phones and gets other people involved. Because when other people get involved, you got four other people involved. Two said, yeah, you know, he's right. He, that person shouldn't have done that. And now you've got a division. Can I hear a good amen? Amen. 1 Corinthians 11.18. We're going to go quickly. Corinthians 11.18. 11, and isn't it interesting? Today is a holiday. I mean, I know this is a holiday. I understand it's a holiday. I understand that. But where is everybody? Do you think that we're the only ones that need this message? Kim, you think you and I are the only ones that need this message? Where is everybody? Oh, the devil made sure. I, that's why I don't teach on marriage anymore. Seriously. I used to have eight-week teachings on how to have a good marriage. I don't do that anymore. You know why? Because nobody shut the devil. That, 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 those weeks, the devil makes sure that all the couples who need that are not there. So now I'm just going to catch him by surprise and preach it in prompto. 
not going to prepare. I'm going to do it, but I'm going to do it without preparing. Because the devil can read my notes. Can't read my heart, but he can read my notes. So as soon as I prepare a message on marriage and how to have a better relationship, he starts reading my notes. And then make sure everybody can't get there. They stall out, they got traffic, all the married couples are not there. So next time I talk on marriage, it's going to be impromptu and not planned. I'm not lying, I'm serious. That devil reads my notes. Not, not a lot, some believers don't want to read the notes, but the devil always is interested in what I'm writing. That foul devil. Kish my Torah, baby. I love the way you sure handle the devil. Kish me on Or kish my toches. Yeshua said, get behind me, Satan. And trust me, the only thing behind Yeshua was the same thing that's behind you. Les derrière. Kiss, get behind me. You know, there's, there's, there's an English way of saying that. Kiss my Torah, baby. I'm being nice, okay? 1 Corinthians 11, 18. First of all, when you come together in the Israelite congregation, I hear that there are divisions among you. Rav Shaul, I didn't know you attend B'nai Yeshua Synagogue. Since when did you become a member? I hear, ooh, that there are divisions among you. And I partially believe it. <laughs> How about fully believe it? So notice, he's writing to the Corinthian Kehillah, and he says, you know, when you come together in the Israelite congregation, I've heard that there are divisions among you, 1 Corinthians 11, 18, and I'm starting to partly believe it. Tell me the truth. Speak up or forever hold this shalom there. Now, stay with me now. Turn your neighbor and say, stay with him. Stay with Turn your neighbor and say, him stay now. <laughs> Get this straight, brothers and sisters. Don't, don't miss this. Every kihila congregation has problems in relationships, just like every physical family. It is the devil's job, don't, don't miss this, if you don't remember anything else, listen, listen, it's good to me. It is the devil's job to tell you that only our congregation, listen, only Bnei Yeshua Synagogue has these problems. Elsewhere, they don't exist. And boy, does he work that. Does he work that? I'm going to, ahora yo viene a Pambiche, Pambiche, Brasilia. Como si brasileiro, yo soy puto. Ingresa, en San Paulo. I go, I go. Too many problems in the Indonesia. Too many problems. And that's the way the enemy has. So if we find a new home and a new congregation, we won't have this problem. That is a lie from the pit of hell. Because the same people who don't know how to overcome offenses, will, they won't know over there if they don't guard their heart and guard their spirit and build themselves up in the faith. They will offend people there and they'll get offended there. And just like they got offended here, it's better for them to learn how to avoid being offended than to get offended there after they got offended here. Changing, changing venues will not solve your problem. Boy, I'm preaching good today. I'm preaching good. I think. Get this straight. I'm going to read this again. Every congregation has problems in relationships between people. Just like every physical family has problems. It is the job of the devil to tell you that you are in the only congregation where these things go on. He's told me that. He's told you that. He's told... He works the same way. You're in a place, it's the, this stuff goes on over there, but it doesn't go on down the block. Problem is, when you get there down the block, you find the same people getting offended, and the same, and now what do you do? You go to congregation number three, and now you're playing musical congregations. Are you with me? No. Learn now. Protect your heart now. Learn and see Yahweh. 
Don't make me a better preacher. Don't make me a better singer. Don't make me a better musician. Make me someone who knows how to ignore the offenses and build myself up in the most kadosh emunah when the offenses are going to come. Because Lord knows they're going to come. They're going to come. The question is, how will we respond when these offenses come? Can I hear a good amen? Amen. To that about Yahweh. So my response to that is, that's what the devil says. These, these problems exist in this congregation only. They don't exist anywhere else. Thus, why don't you just leave the congregation and, and you'll go somewhere else where these problems don't exist. You know what my response to that is? Balogna. Genoa, Salama, Balogna. You see what the word says. The word says in 1 Corinthians 11, 18. Listen. No talking. Listen. The word says in 1 Corinthians 11, 18. Whenever believers come together, they bring their quirks. They bring their hang-ups. They bring their problems to the assembly. That's what it says. Look at that. 1 Corinthians 11, 18. Whenever you come together, there are divisions and problems. When? How often? Whenever you come together. All the time. Whenever you come together, there are divisions and problems. Who, whenever who comes together? Any congregation comes together. Whenever any congregation, Corinth, Ephesus, Colossus, Yerushalayim, whenever any congregation comes together, there come the quirks, there come the hang-ups, there come the problems. So if the quirks and the hang-ups are going to come whenever the congregation comes together, one of the problems going to come. Dr. Maria, one of the problems is going to come whenever the congregation comes what? Together. So if the problems are going to come whenever the congregation comes together, the, it's our job calling on the power that's in us, Moshiach in us, the hope of glory, Yeshua HaMashiach, it's our job not to allow an individual's problem to become a congregational problem. That's your job. You follow me? Because if somebody walks in with a problem, the devil wants to spread that problem so that everybody in the congregation is dealing with your personal problem. And what Rav Shul will say? Whenever the assembly comes together, what's going to happen? There'll be divisions among you. And Rav Shul said, I partly believe it. That any time you call a meeting, there come your problems. He goes, I'm not there, but I partly believe it. I understand. There are problems. There. Whenever you come together, there are problems. And I partly believe it. Because he knows human nature. So when an individual comes in, they bring their love for Yeshua, but they also bring their problems. But a mature believer says, listen, Daryl, are you with me? A mature believer says, I am not going to allow your problem to become my problem. I'm going to ignore your problem. I'm not going to listen to your problem. I'm not going to let you spread that poison into my heart and into my ears. I'm going to isolate the problem and realize you are holy and blameless. That Yeshua's opinion about you is that you're, you're perfect in the beloved. But right now your behavior is not matching the declaration of your character in Yeshua. I'm going to believe Yahweh's report and Yahweh's opinion that you're acting out of character. You're holy and blameless and you're perfect because of the blood of Yeshua and you're standing with me, is he, with Yahweh, is eternally righteous, but you're not behaving that way. You're causing problems. You're offending me and you're offending others. So I will separate the offender from the offense. I will not change my opinion of the offender and I will ignore the offense. This is good stuff. Good stuff. This is this is good stuff. I will I will I will I will ignore the offense, and I will maintain a healthy opinion about the offender. They hurt me. They came against me, but they're perfect. They're washed. They're cleansed. They're forgiven. They've been given new life. They're a new creation in Messiah Yeshua. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Somebody. But their behavior, it's not matching up with who Yahweh's opinion about them is. I choose to ignore it. 
I choose not to hold any grievances. I choose to have Yahweh's opinion about them. The same way Yahweh doesn't change his opinion about me when I fall short of his glory. That's the key. That's the key right there. We guard our heart. We build ourselves up in the Emunah. So it's our job not to allow an individual's problem to become a congregational problem. That's not done by attacking the offender or by withdrawing or by trying to justify our hurt and our anger to others. I'm going to read that again. We, do not we, we are not to justify our hurt in our anger to others. When we are hurt, turn to your neighbor and say, when I'm hurt. Let's try that again. When I'm hurt. When I'm hurt. What, where are you guys? When I'm hurt, when I, hurt. I am not to, to, to justify my hurt and the anger to others, but I am to guard the love of Yahweh that is in me, allowing Yeshua love in me to love the offender, and all the while ask Yahweh to teach me how to never be offended again. Do you realize you have that power in you by the Ruach HaKodesh? You've got the power that raised Yeshua HaMashiach from the dead. It is the power of immortality and it is the power of eternal life, somebody. And you call upon that power. And you say to that power, from this day, November 24th, is that what it is? November 24th? I will never be offended again. You can do it. I refuse to be offended. Sounds impossible. Correct. With man it is impossible. But with Yahweh, all things are possible. Praise Yahweh. Is it easy? No. Because if it was easy, everybody would do it. And there wouldn't be wars and fighting and ending among you. But Rashaul says when the Israelite congregation comes together, I, I hear there is quarreling, division, strife, envy, jealousy, and I partly believe it, even though I'm not your rabbi, even though I'm a shaliach, I believe it because I know human nature. I partly believe what I'm hearing. Meaning, if you go to Fort Lauderdale, to another Messianic congregation, they'll have some of the same garbage we have here. If you go to Kentucky and you look for another congregation, that they don't have the problems we have here, you'll find the same problems in Kentucky. And then, Bubba, where do you go? And then where do you go? Exactly where the devil has ordained you to go. Home. All congregations are lousy. All congregations have problems. All believers are hypocrites. You believe the lie of the enemy. Now everybody's a hypocrite. And now it's time to pull the blinds. Close the window. Get out of fellowship. And call Amanda. Amanda! I'm ready for the Kool-Aid. Did you bring the Kool-Aid, sweetheart? Let's lie down and drink. Jim Jones told us we were only going to sleep. We're not killing anybody here. We're just going to go under the talit and we're going to sleep. Amanda, it's now time to pour the Kool-Aid. You think I'm kidding? Now somebody just got offended that the talit hit the floor. You know that. You, you guarantee. Sign, seal, deliver. I'm yours. I didn't mean to do that, but there's no need to get offended. So we've got to reach out into a supernatural program that goes something like this. Yahweh, that man knows how to push my buttons. That man, she, he know, she knows how to get me riled up. She knows how to get me on this thing. But Yahweh, you said I have the Ruach HaKodesh. You say that the Ruach HaKodesh dwells in me. Show me. Teach me. From this day on, I never want to get offended again. It can be done. Once you call on Yahweh to teach you to never be offended again, He will answer. Knock, and it shall be opened. Seek, and you shall find. Ask, 
and it shall be given to you. For everyone that asks, receives. And to everyone who knocks, to him it shall be opened. The question is, is your knocking a light tapping? Or is it a perpetual knocking and say, Yahweh, I want to be a giant in your kingdom. And in order to be a giant in your kingdom, I have to be able to overcome every offense of every man and everything the enemy can throw at me through other human beings. Where would Dr. King and the civil rights movement have been because someone offended him? Some of his lieutenants walked away. Some of his disciples walked with him no more. They bombed his church. They threatened his family. Men who used to walk with him who wanted to destroy the movement. What happened if Dr. King would have been offended? What would have happened? History would have been a lot different than it is today. Real men and women don't get offended, or if they do easily, they call upon the Ruach HaKodesh to change their response. Not the offender, not the one who's trying to spread offenses in the congregation. They ask Yahweh to help them respond how? The only way. Ignore the offense, and while you're ignoring the offense, hold to you Yeshua's opinion of them. They're holy, they're blameless, they're righteous, they're going to heaven, they're saved, but they're behaving out of character. They're messing up. They're not behaving like Yeshua even though they are washed and clean like Yeshua, they're not behaving like Yeshua. So you're able to separate the behavior from the positional righteousness of the offender. They're behaving out of character. Are you with me? Are we going? It can be done. If it couldn't be done, the, the, the scriptures would not tell us that it could be done. Verse 19. First Corinthians, Corinthians 11, 19. And if you don't believe me, then you've never been to another congregation. Do you know I have gotten offended in every congregation that I've ever been to? Do you know that? Every congregation, no matter where you go, you will be offended. Someone will eventually say something or do something, and, and offenses will come. We need to grow up and we need to prepare for the offense and the fiery darts of the enemy that will inevitably be protracted at us and projected at us. And we don't prepare to overcome offenses when they come, but we've got to have a plan in place before they come. Do you remember what I just told you? You won't forget? The lie of the enemy, I'm going to repeat it. I feel Yahweh telling me to repeat it. Here's what the devil does. Hey guys, only in Bnei Yeshua are these problems found. All these relationships are messed up. They don't exist anywhere else. Rav Shaul says, you lying devil. Look at 1 Corinthians 11, 18. Whenever you come together, there are divisions. Look at that. Look at that. Let the word of Yahweh be true in every man a liar. 1 Corinthians 11, 18. First of all, whenever you come together, divisions. So if you're going to call it any kind of a meaning in any congregation, you're going to get quirks, hang-ups, and divisions. So if we can't stop the quirks, hang-ups, and divisions, you've got to train ahead of time how to deal. Here it is. Ignore. Ignore. And have Yahweh's opinion. And build yourself up. Your tendency is to call Vincent and say, Vincent, he hurt me. He did this to me, she did this to me, Anna did this to me. No, you resist that tendency. You ask the Ruach HaKodesh to give you the desire to build yourself up in your most Kadosh Emunah, the book of Yehuda, verse 20, and you put on a CD and you hang up the stupid phone. And I don't mind sharing dirty laundry with the radio audience because there are pastors and rabbis out there, they don't have a clue. They think they have the only congregation that has division and that has splits and that has problems. They, they're out there, they're isolated. They think they're the only one it's happening to. Look at verse 19. For there must be, there must be controversies and there must be heresies among you that those who are approved may be made manifest among you. Notice. 
Notice. Let's read that again. 1 Corinthians 11, 19. For there must be controversy and heresy. Why? So those who are approved may be made what? Manifest among you. Notice. The word of Yahweh tells us in 1 Corinthians 11, 19 that the offenses and the controversies that come into any congregation is so that we can see who is and who is not stable and who is and who is not easily shaken. I have felt like leaving a million times, but I never have. I didn't feel like coming a couple weeks ago. I showed up. So did you. Look. Look. The reason Yahweh allows controversy and heresy in the Kehillah is to manifest amongst ourselves those who have been approved to lead and to be stable and those who are not approved to lead and be stable. Notice, offenses and controversies come. And they come so we can see who is, is and is not stable, who is and who is not shaken. Those that are not shaken are manifest that they have been approved by Yahweh. Are you with me? Those that are not shaken are manifested that they have been approved by Yahweh. Those who are shaken by in-house problems are shaky in Yeshua's love for themselves. I'll say that again so you don't think I'm reading notes. I need to read the notes because I forgot. But then I'm going to look up so I'm not using the notes. Those who are easily shaken by in-house problems have a low self-esteem of Yeshua's love for them. If a person is strong in Yeshua's love for them, they won't let the problems in the house shake them. If a person is offended by all the problems in any congregation, it's because they have a hard time receiving from Yeshua. We project on Abba Yahweh the shortcomings of our earthly father and mother. And we think we're unworthy of love and deserve to be punished. And we, when we believe the lie that we're unworthy of love and deserve to be punished, we think to ourselves, how can Yeshua love us when we mess up? Because we're projecting human tendencies on our Heavenly Father. And so when, when we have a tough time receiving Yeshua's love for ourselves, there's no way I could love Daryl. There's no way I could love you. There's no way you could love me because I'm not receiving that love, so I can't be a conduit. I can't overlook your offense. I've got to kill you, and if I don't have the guts to, to destroy you, I will go to other people in the congregation and destroy you behind your back. It's getting quiet now, huh? So a person, so in other words, Yahweh says, 1 Corinthians eleven nineteen. Controversy and division must, turn to your neighbor and say must. must. Turn to your neighbor and say must. must. Not mustard, must. Must come into the congregation, notice, to manifest who's stable and who is unstable, who's tested and who's a novice. Can it get any clearer? The controversies that come into any congregation. Which congregate? This one? No. No, any congregate are there for you as a child of Yahweh to say, wow, that, that dude's not easily shaken. His wife has cancer. His children don't talk to him. All his church friends don't answer the phone since he's walking in Torah. And look at him. He's feeding the homeless. He's walking. He's solid. He's steady. He doesn't believe every stupid thing that everybody says in the congregation. So it's manifest to everybody that this man is mature. This man knows that he has no love in the world. He's not receiving love, but he's receiving the love that can come from Yeshua only, and he's able to rest in that love and to ignore the offenses when they come. You're never going to be able to ignore the offenses when they come if you don't learn to receive your love, not from your husband, but from Yeshua.